Excellent. So welcome to UCR Library Workshop, Making Memes with Public Domain and Creative Commons Images. Um, there is that bit.ly link if you want to follow along in the slides, and we'll also pop it into the chat. Uh, this slide deck was adapted and we are using a Creative Commons license, so that is also listed there just for reference. Um, go ahead. Uh, first, I'd like to read a statement of solidarity. Uh, we want to acknowledge that the pandemic and other structural inequalities have disproportionately affected people of color, particularly Black and Indigenous peoples. As members of the UCR community, we stand with Black Lives Matter and AAPI communities against racism, xenophobia, and human rights violations. We also recognize our responsibility to the original and current caretakers of this land, water, and air, the Cahuilla, Tongva, Luiseño, and Serrano peoples, as well as their ancestors and descendants, past, present, and future. Though we now meet in a digital space, we invite you to learn whose ancestral lands you're physically located on. You can visit native-land.ca to find out. And then for this workshop, please do what's best for you and engage in any way you're comfortable. Um, so who are we? I am Crystal Bullard. I'm the Digital Initiatives Specialist, and my co-host today is Rachel Starry, the Digital Scholarship Librarian here at UCR Library. Today's agenda, just to give you an idea, an outline of what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk about the copyright protections and legally reusing images. We'll go over some ethical considerations when reusing images. Uh, what is the public domain and finding public domain images and how that can come in handy. And then we'll also cover what Creative Commons licenses are and how to find those Creative Commons licensed images. And then at the end, hopefully we'll have some time to practice making a meme. Um, most memes build on other people's work, and so a really great way to kind of figure out where something came from uh, is to visit the website knowyourmeme.com. It is a database of images and articles that track the origin and sort of the lifespan of any given meme or any other kind of viral uh, media that happens to uh, may include images or videos or other, you know, textual statements that get kind of repurposed. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you wanted to share that or we can just leave the link there for people to visit later. Yeah, I think it's safe to click over. I double check there's nothing strange coming up at the top of this website, but it is, as Crystal was saying, a really excellent resource. Um, and we'll kind of get into, um, you know, citation and, and ethical reuse and as Crystal was saying, um, different ways we would want to reuse things. But um, this is a great resource if you're just like, you know, what is a meme format that, you know, um, or if you want to track down kind of the original um, instance of when a meme um, appeared. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. I'll go back in here. Okay. Um, so we are going to start off by giving a little bit of background um, in terms of copyright to kind of uh, talk about the legal framework about reusing images. Um, so I'd like to start here um, because copyright's very complex. Um, of course, today we're going to be talking specifically about, um, because we're at a U.S. institution, you know, U.S. copyright law. So we're really only going to be talking about things that apply to works created in the United States. Um, of course, other countries and regions have their own, um, you know, legal frameworks, and um, this is strictly about works that are created in the U.S. Um, so I also want to kind of do a general disclaimer at the top um, that, you know, we are not lawyers. Um, so we're basically, you know, we're librarians, we're presenting factual information to the best of our ability about U.S. copyright law, um, but this workshop, you know, we're not giving legal advice, just general disclaimer there. Um, so in terms of, you know, kind of just what is copyright, right? And then when we kind of talk about, like, what does it mean to reuse an image that is copyrighted? What does that, you know, look like? Essentially, um, and of course, you know, copyright law exists to protect the original works of creators to give them the ability to benefit for a limited amount of time from things and to kind of, you know, promote the creation of original works, right? Um, and then after a, a certain time, there is a, an exp expiration date on different types of materials so that it then will become a public good. But essentially for the period when copyright applies to a work, creators are entitled to six exclusive rights to the things that they create. And those are the right to reproduce, the right to create derivative works, for example, adapting a book into a play, um, the right to distribute copies of the work, the right to perform the work publicly, 
and the right to display the work publicly. In addition, if it's um, something like, um, you know, a song, music, um, then the right to perform that publicly through sound recording. So playing a song in a store in a commercial kind of setting or a, a public setting. Um, and of course, copyright's a lot more complicated than we might often think. So a kind of uh, you know, some of the basics or misconceptions we want to address today are that, you know, um, copyright, um, a misconception is that copyright only applies to works that, you know, creators register with the U.S. Copyright Office. That's not the case. Um, folks who create um, creative works in fixed form, so not ideas, but something that's actually in a fixed form, um, is copyrighted automatically at the time of creation. Um, and that includes unpublished works as well. So, your journal. Um, that's you have the you own the copyright to things that you write down um, that are you know creative and original. Um, another kind of misconception is that you know you have to display a copyright symbol or, or mark of some kind on a work for it to kind of be copyrighted. Also misconception. Again, things are just automatically copyrighted, and you own the right to do these six things to things that you create and fix for the first time. You know, in uh, fixed form. So what does that mean when it comes to, you know, finding images, reusing images? There's a lot of kind of ambiguity and, um, you know, misconceptions, uh, again, about the reuse of images, especially images that we find online, right? Because there's so many images just being shared across the internet without any kind of citation or, you know, making it obvious who owns the rights to those materials. Um, so for the purposes of, you know, creating a meme and just in general reproducing images, reusing an image, is not just you know, displaying it on your website, displaying it on a screen or in print, right? It's also anytime you, um, you know, reproduce or change it in any way, make copies, distribute it or perform it, that all counts as reuse, right? So if that content is copyrighted in the United States, then reusing it without permission is illegal. Um, and of course there are several exceptions to these um, outlined in uh, you know, Title 17 in different sections. Um, and fair use is probably the most complex, but also most applicable today in this context. Um, so the idea, and we'll get into fair use a little bit, not too much, um, that, you know, there are some circumstances like nonprofit educational sorts of circumstances, as well as other cases where you can make a case that your use of copyrighted material is justified. And, you know, U.S. copyright law does lay out what those cases are. We'll look at in a second. Um, and there's other kinds of exceptions, like when you um, say perform a work um, or play a movie in a classroom um, or you know distribute copies of an article in a classroom, there's some protections there. And of course, libraries are able also to make reproductions for accessibility. So you know, making a, a braille version of a book, for example, for someone who is not cited. Um, so again, memes are a great example of this particular, you know, um, kind of complexity of copyright where reuse, reusing an image includes lots of different things like reproducing, altering, and displaying that creative work that may belong to somebody else. So in terms of kind of, this is very complex. Again, I'll probably say that a, a lot today, but we really want to just convey a few key points. Um, and I'll probably try and call out because <laughs> we have a lot of, um, a lot of memes baked into these slides today. Um, so the meme on this slide is, uh, it's a photo of a dog. And the text on the photo says, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. It's a dog using a computer, I should specify. Um, and this is a CC licensed image. Again, we will get into later why we have this citation here, the kind of components of this citation, why this is important, um, and why we're able to kind of legally reuse this particular image in this slide deck. But basically, to kind of summarize, creators hold the copyright to their own work with very few exceptions. Uh, I have a link here to, um, I'll go ahead and click on it to a really excellent resource. Um, probably my favorite copyright resource that I point folks to is the Cornell Copyright Information Center. So they have a lot of excellent resources here on, you know, what is copyright? Again, this is, you know, where I'm drawing a lot of this information from um, going back, of course, to actually copyright law as it's written, um, but an excellent resource uh, about copyright in general. Um, and again, you know, despite the fact that we know or that um, you know, creators do hold the copyright to their own work, visual media is so often shared online without permission or attribution to the original creator, right? Can you think of, or I can think of so many different memes that, you know, I've used, reused, but I don't actually know who created them for the very first time or who maybe 
um, you know, was the creator of the original image or meme. So this is an example, again, from knowyourmeme.com of the this is fine meme, which is the dog sitting, the anthropomorphized dog sitting at a table in a room on fire, <laughs> surrounded by flames, that actually came from um, a webcomic called uh, Gun Show, illustrated by Casey Green, published originally in January of 2013. So this is, again, um, an excellent resource for kind of finding out when a meme first started or who the actual creator was of an image. Um, and the reason that, unfortunately, every time I go in Google Slides, Google Slides does this thing where, anyways, um, apologies for kind of flopping around on the slides a lot when I pop out. Um, so the reason, again, folks um, share memes and modify memes and, you know, there hasn't yet, as of 2021, been a legal case where anyone has successfully um, or even unsuccessfully um, made a copyright infringement case on a meme. Um, so, you know, no creators that I know of um, using this kind of resource called the Fair Use Index no one's been taken to court about memes and the kind of reasoning, the understanding there is that this use of memes um, falls under the fair use exception. Again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail today about fair use if folks have specific questions um, and we are available just in general as an aside, um, if you're doing research and you wanna do a fair use assessment on the reuse of a particular image or text, um, we're available to consult on that, um, but in general, Folks argue that memes fall under this fair use exception. And just to kind of clarify, and this is a link to copyright.gov, the actual US Copyright Office website that kind of describes what fair use is, right? So fair use is a framework um, for certain kinds of uses of copyrighted material um, that are legal. So these include criticism, comments, um, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. So these are examples of activities that may qualify as fair use, um, but only a judge, only a court can actually decide. As of right now, there's some changes coming to US copyright law. Um, again, don't really have the time to get into today um, where there's gonna be copyright officers. There's a new act that was passed recently. Um, but as of right now, um, this is the kind of context only a judge can decide whether something is or is not fair use. Um, and there's a lot of factors, again, um, that go into kind of determining whether something is fair use. So whether it is, um, so fair use is favored by non-commercial, non-profit educational uses of things, um, what kinds of things you're reusing, how much of them you're reusing, the effect on the market, all these sorts of things. Um, so again, memes kind of fall into this bucket where in general, it's assumed that, you know, it is a fair use of original creative works, whoever took this photo of this dog on the laptop, um, that is not an infringement. Um, but we are gonna also kind of talk about today and I'll kick it over to Crystal here. In addition to just the simple kind of legal framework of can you reuse something? There's also kind of questions we might wanna ask about, should we reuse something? Um, and then what we're gonna spend the bulk of, you know, the time today on later is about um, a couple of categories of images that are um, that you can feel really confident are good for reusing. And those are, of course, public domain images and Creative Commons licensed images as in the title of this workshop. Um, so with this, I'll, I'll stop talking and let Crystal kind of speak a bit to this ethical question. Thank you. Yeah, so going over some of the very brief kind of outline of copyright is kind of really helpful to think about like where, where are the guardrails, right? Um, and then we also want to think through the ethics. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's ethical or okay to do. And so um, it's always good practice to seek permission and uh, give attribution. And uh, there are images which you do not need to seek permission in making. So uh, anything that's public domain, which uh, we'll also go over. Um, this photo of the bear that I put the deal with it glasses on is from the Library of Congress and it is public domain image. And I. I was thinking about Scotty Bear when I made it. Um, so yeah, guardrails. And then uh, we can go into the next slide. Um, when you might think twice about sharing something. Um, so we're considering the ethics of sharing and sort of the circumstances in which there might be potential for exploitation or harm. Some of those circumstances are cultural appropriation, you know, digital colonialism or exploiting indigenous knowledge. Uh, we think about identity and privacy issues. 
uh, protecting vulnerable populations, incarcerated folks and minors, that also falls in lines with like IRB in your research. Um, and misinformation is a thing that we need to think about these days. Um, so some of the big kind of questions I ask myself when I'm confronted with it, you know, do I want to share this is in an ethical framework is who holds the power and who might be harmed. So just, I know it's hard when you're like making a funny picture, but those are two of the big questions that I kind of try to hold in my mind when I'm thinking about, you know, am I going to share this? Um, and that can kind of help guide your, you know, your ethical decision and whether it's okay to share or not. Um, so yeah, we can go on to the next. Um, and so far, I believe all the images we've had in this, well, that's not true. We have one Creative Commons image. So in addition to um, kind of um, this legal and ethical, these sorts of frameworks, as you're thinking about finding images to use for making memes, um, we want to kind of give you uh, two categories of resources to consider as you're finding images. Um, and those are images that are on the one hand in the public domain, which means they're free to use. We'll get into that in just a second, um, as well as images, as I said, in the, uh, that are Creative Commons licensed. And we'll kind of um, talk about that next. So what does it mean? We're using this phrase, you know, this image is in the public domain. So then we're able to use it. What does that even mean? So according to the Stanford Copyright and Fair Use Center, another excellent resource, um, and I'm just gonna read what they say about public domain. They say the term public domain refers to creative materials that are not protected by intellectual property laws, such as copyright, trademark, or patent laws. Um, and again, we're kind of limiting ourselves today to just talking about images, and images are most likely um, photographs and, and kind of drawings are generally governed by copyright. But if you have things like logos um, or other sorts of visual materials that brands are using to distinguish themselves, those might fall under different laws, trademark and patent laws, which we're not really covering today. So in terms of these creative materials not protected by intellectual property laws, the public owns these works, right? Not an individual author or artist. So anyone can use a public domain work without obtaining permission, but no one can ever own it. No one individual, it, it is owned by everybody. So that's essentially what it means for something to be um, public domain or in the public domain. And you'll sometimes see, we have an um, image on the screen here um, a kind of uh, anti-copyright sort of symbol, um, which is just the copyright symbol with a bar through it to indicate that no one owns the copyright on this material. So there are a couple of different ways something could arrive in the public domain um, and become, you know, a public domain um, image. And the first way is um, that the copyright, it was a copyrighted image or material, but the copyright expired. So copyright law has changed several times over US history, um, meaning that um, it gets complicated really fast in terms of like when something was published, what type of work it was, who published it, where they lived when they published it, right? There's kind of a lot that goes into that. But essentially, um, a quick rule of thumb is that uh, all visual works published in the United States uh, before January 1st, 1926, um, unless Congress intervenes and something changes again, uh, are now in the public domain. Um, different rules will apply to unpublished works. Again, like if, you know, your journal, something that wasn't actually published, um, as well as for works by American citizens living in other countries. So this, again, it might get a little more um, complex with international copyright law. Um, and uh, every year, and again, unless Congress intervenes and something else changes again with copyright law, um, this uh, January 1st, you know, new public domain day will move, move forward every year. So in 2022, this date would be January 1st, 1927. So we have that to celebrate next January 1st, um, and it keeps moving forward. So then, you know, once the copyright has expired, that item then is no longer just belonging to the person who created it and theirs to benefit from, it belongs to everybody. It's a public good everyone can use and benefit from it. So the second way that something can become in the public domain is that the copyright owner failed to co follow copyright renewal laws. Again, this is gonna get complicated really quickly, but, um, and there are thought to be, you know, millions of works that were kind of published in this, um, this time period between uh, January uh, 1st, 1923 and 1964 that are now in the public domain because their original um, copyright owners 
didn't renew after the initial 28 year term. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to prove that the copyright um, was not renewed. Um, so it's generally safest to treat works created in this time period after, you know, or after 1926, that January 1st, that magic kind of public domain date um, and 1964, just treat them as copyrighted unless you are certain that you can kind of definitively prove um, or determine otherwise. Um, the third way that things arrive, um, and I'm seeing a question in chat, uh, and I will, um, let's see if that is related to this right here. Oh, it's about pushing back public domain dates um, to keep their intellectual property away from public domain. Yes, so they, so there are certain companies, um, Disney's one of them, <laughs> hi Disney, um, that do their very best um, to maintain the right to commercially benefit from creative materials. Um, and they do that in a number of ways. It's not, I don't know, to speak to the exact question that was asked in chat, no, I don't know a lot about the lobbying and kind of like congressional processes that happen around the creation of US copyright law. But yes, historically that has factored in to the development of copyright law over time. And I would kick that over to like uh, someone who specializes in historical law um, to kind of you know dive into deeper, but yeah, excellent, excellent point from someone in chat. So there's a lot of kind of, again, complexity in how things have changed over time um, and how companies have successfully lobbied Congress to do things that benefit them. Um, and uh, yeah, but for the purposes of kind of continuing on to the next sorts of ways things arrive in the public domain, number three is that the copyright owner can, before the copyright you know um, period has expired, deliberately release something into the public domain. So this is called dedication. Um, and one way to do this is with a Creative Commons zero license or a public domain mark through Creative Commons. And we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but essentially you can make the decision. I want to release this and like, relinquish all copyright ownership of this material. Um, there is no take backs. So if you do this, it is permanent. You can't then after the fact be like, oh no, I made that, I wanna change it. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, but this is absolutely a right for a creator to choose to release something into the public domain. And it's very common um, for certain kinds of images in particular. And then finally, um, a fourth case of how something could be in the public domain is that copyright law does not protect that type of work in the first place. So this includes um, certain kinds of things, right? Things that are simply not copyrightable at all, like ideas, again, they have to be in fixed form, like facts and factual information. Um, so no one owns uh, basic, you know, numerical sort of statistics, like the distance between the earth and the sun. That's just a fact, that's a number, right? No one can own that. Um, and otherwise uh, things like um, works created by federal employees government employees in the course of their job duties. Um, so an example is, um, you know, images created by NASA or the USDA or all kinds of different governmental agencies. Um, so there's a lot of materials out there that were governmentally created. Um, so again, not copyrightable um, and therefore in the public domain by default. Are there any other questions? I'll pause now in case there's questions um, related to things that are in the public domain or these kind of copyright um, issues. And Crystal shared in chat, um, search for Steamboat Willie to learn how Disney has steered copyright law to protect their commercial interests. Um, gov images. Um, so do you, meant, uh, do you mean um, images that were created by uh, NASA or other other, anything created by a governmental agency created by um, federal employees in the course of their job duties is um, in, in the public domain. So that's why, you know, you see a lot of those really amazing um, images taken by like the Hubble Space Telescope. Those are public domain. Um, lots of other examples. Um, so we have a couple of examples here of images that we gathered from different cultural institutions, um, such as museums and archives. A lot of 
um, museums and archives are making their collections available, um, or by default, some of the images are uh, um, old enough that they are have, you know, copyright has expired and they are in the public domain in that way. Um, and we don't have citations on these images. Um, I have another slide here. And if you haven't gathered by now, our theme for today is cute animal pictures. Um, so these are all public domain images and we don't have the citations here on the slide to emphasize, you know, that legally we don't have to do so because these images are in the public domain. Um, however, we do have slides at the end of this slide deck that have the citations um, for all of these because, uh, again, there's a number of reasons why you would want to cite things, um, not just kind of demonstrate uh, awareness of the fact that, you know, creators are creating things and not everything is something we've made ourselves, right, to kind of attribute the original creator. Um, and uh, also to um, kind of respect the contributions that folks make as you build upon work that you've shared, um, even if it's in the public domain, it's really good practice to cite images um, as well for especially, you know, images like this that are from a particular museum collection. It's really important for someone to kind of know uh, where did that image come from? What is it? Um, just basically more information about the images. So that's public domain. And I will kick it over again to Crystal to talk about the other main category, which is Creative Commons images. Yeah, so uh, Creative Commons, um, it's been around, I think about 20 years now. Um, and it is a way that you can license your creative output. Um, it is a framework for, um, for creating these licenses. Uh, and you can define how you wanna give permission to, for others to use your work. And so if you see a Creative Commons license, it means that the creator has explicitly said, this is how I want other people to use my work. Um, and then of course you can do the same when you put something out into the world. Um, it is a free, a simple and standardized way to grant copyright permissions for creative and, creative and academic works, ensure proper attributions and allow others to copy, distribute and make use of these works. Um, so they're also eligible for US copyright protections by default, but it, it does allow that like additional sort of encouragement for other people to kind of uh, take that work and, and uh, make something new out of it. So we can go to the next slide. Um, and how does it work? So if a creator wants to apply a CC license, um, they first decide which license to use. And then once it's chosen, then they can make that, they can put that notice on their work. Um, and then share it either on their website or there's a lot of different platforms that specifically encourage Creative Commons licenses. Uh, Flickr is one of them, YouTube, Bandcamp, Wikimedia Commons uses a lot of Creative Commons licenses. Um, and the Internet Archive also kind of encourages the, the Creative Commons licenses. The, the most basic license that you can, uh, well, there's, there's several layers of licenses. There's um, CC0, which is to put it in the public domain. There isn't, um, you can give, you can ask for attribution. You can ask that somebody uh, not make derivatives or you can encourage derivatives. You can ask that somebody not use it in a commercial way or you can leave that off and uh, allow people to use it commercially if they want. And you can also do the share alike uh, version or, of the license. And that means that you, if somebody were to use your work, that you would ask them to share alike and share their work as you did yours. So that essentially that license that you've put on your work carries through into the new person's work. Um, so free to use, follow all the conditions. Um, you can usually click, click through the link and read more about it so you know exactly what they're, they're asking you to do. Um, a common attribution, the ideal attribution is the title of the work, the author, and then the license itself. Um, and you can hyperlink that in your caption to point back to those, um, those resources so that people can find out more about the creator or you know, find more information about the artwork itself. Um, and yeah, so there's uh, di different ways to kind of mix all those together and you can kind of decide what, uh, what level of encouragement or restriction that you want to apply to your work. So we can go on to the next slide. These are some Creative Commons licensed images. Um, so in the Wellcome collection, it's a, uh, 
museum repository and they have a CC BY license. So we're giving them attribution. BY is that's all they're asking for. And then uh, the next one is some sloths. And I got it, I think, from Flickr. And it has CC BY NC essay. So um, BY is the attribution. And then NC is non commercial. So as long as I don't make a t shirt out of this, they're, they're okay with that. Um, and then share alike. So if, if uh, it, I'm using this image, I also want people to use this slide deck as a share alike license. We can go on to the next one. Um, also Creative Commons license I found, uh, and we have CC by NCND, so non-commercial, non-derivative. Um, so they don't want you to make derivative artworks from this, and they don't want to you to use it commercially. And then the dog catching the dog treat is CC by SA, so share alike, attribution and share alike. Um, so there's just different versions of ways you can mix up the Creative Commons licenses and um, kind of assert to others how you want to see your work used. Yeah, so to just to kind of summarize again the differences um, between these two main categories of media, public domain versus Creative Commons. Um, the um, so for public domain media, um, again, anyone can use this media without restriction and you don't have to credit the original creator or publisher legally. Um, it is still an excellent practice to cite and attribute it as a source. Um, and of course, in academic contexts, um, you know, in research papers and in published articles, even professional you know, presentations, it is uh, expected or a required practice to credit your sources, regardless of whether um, you know, they were cop in copyright or public domain or, um, or otherwise licensed works. Um, public domain works can be used for any purpose, including commercial gain, um, whereas for, with Creative Commons, only certain licenses allow commercial reuse. Um, and all public domain works can be remixed. There's no limitations on kind of transformative future work, building on this work, um, and again, without requiring any kind of permission. On the other hand, um, Creative Commons, as Crystal was saying, can be um, a combination of different ways folks restrict the reuse of their work um, or permit, on the other hand. So um, on the screen here, we have icons for the six co most common Creative Commons licenses. Um, the most basic, if you're not releasing something into the public domain with CC0, the most basic license is um, attribution. So all six of these include the icon for by attribution. And then layered on top of by, of course, you can prohibit commercial use, which is the non-commercial NC. You can disallow the derivative works with ND and um, specify that others must retain and share alike with the same license. Um, so we have two share alike licenses here as well. Any questions? So I did see a question in chat about um, the Bible, um, if that is copyrighted. And to kind of sum that up very briefly, I, I do not believe that um, published versions of, um, you know, religious texts that were not created in the U.S. during kind of copyright period um, are protected by U.S. copyright law. That said, publishers may own the copyright to particular formatting of um, a work. And that's, again, so that's an excellent example because a work like the Bible um, could be in the public domain and someone could still commercially benefit from it. Um, so that's actually a really great example of that. Um, and with that, I will pick it back to Crystal to kind of talk us through different ways of actually finding public domain and Creative Commons images. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of different places to find images. I'm sure you all have your favorite places that you go look for images. I wanted to point out the Creative Commons search, um, search.creativecommons.org, and that will uh, sort of aggregate all of the places that use Creative Commons licenses. So that's Flickr, that's YouTube, all of that. Um, and you can filter by what kind of license that you'd like to use. Let's say you do want to use it commercially. You want to filter out the licenses that prohibit that. Um, and uh, you know, image sizes, you can filter. You can filter by, um, I believe there's you know, image types. So you could do an illustration versus a photograph. Um, oh, great, live demo, yes. Uh, yeah, and then there's the checkbox for modify and adapt. Um, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, dogs, cute dogs. <laughs> um, 
and you can see on the the left hand side there's all the different ways you can kind of filter through those results and find what you're looking for um, and you of course in your search terms can get more um, specific than just dogs but uh, sometimes it's it takes a long time because there's actually a lot of content and so the search is, it might take a minute to load on this website in particular um, and then the next website that is on my list oh yeah dpla so digital public library of america um, is modeled after europeana which is another website that aggregates content from different repositories so if you were to go to dp.la you could search across um, all kinds of museums, libraries, archives, cultural institutions, um, historical societies, anybody that sort of has a repository of images that they want to share. Um, and if you didn't know to go to smalltownhistoricalsociety.com, you might be able to find something. Um, we could find to see if there's a dog with a computer. Um, Apparently there are some some hits for that, but there is a filter on the left hand side that has sort of some of those rights that you can filter through and find what you're looking for and what your purpose is that you want to use it. Um, and then lastly, uh, Google Images. And uh, if you go to images.google.com, of course, you can find images, but uh, I don't know if you have that tab open, but just so you know, you can filter through the rights, if you go underneath the search bar itself, the search box, there is um, a like settings button, a tools, there we go, tools, and it should pop up with usage rights. And then that way you can filter through your Creative Commons usage rights. Uh, yes, I would recommend archive.org as another resource, um, different kinds of media, different things. Again, just you know, keep an eye out for the specific kind of use that you have in mind and what kind of license you might want to look for and filter by. Um, you can also search an image in reverse image search. Um, so you can do that in Google Images and there's a couple other tools that allow you to do that, but you can upload an image and, um, and it'll find all of its existences in that search engine. Um, and you can look for the earliest example. So that's another kind of way to see where did this image come from? When was the first time it showed up on the internet? Uh, there's another tool called TinI reverse search, and you can uh, install that in your browser and do a right click and search, and it'll tell you all of the instances of that image and you can kind of track down its history. Um, so yeah, it's always on you to locate and follow those license terms. So uh, knowing that these tools exist and how to find the license um, will help you stay out of trouble with all of the, uh, the various copyright laws and licenses. And I was going to demo the reverse image search, but then I realized I don't really have an image prepared to do the search with, so um, just know it's an option. <laughs> so yeah, we can, let's make some memes. So um, I, found this image on the Creative Commons search, uh, and it is from a museum, a science museum. Uh, and I, I added some text to make it look like an inspirational poster. Um, so I don't know if we want to move on to the next. Yes, yeah, so we're going to throw out a meme challenge to you all. And the question here is, how creative can you get when you restrict yourself to using public domain or Creative Commons licensed images? Um, because of course, you know, we talked a little bit about um, the fact that Memes are generally understood, again, not confirmed by a court yet or by a judge, um, you know, legally. To, to, they, they kind of fall under um, fair use, or you can make a very good um, fair use kind of case for a lot of meme sharing. Um, that said, um, our challenge to you is using public domain or Creative Commons licensed images, select um, an existing meme format and make a new version of that meme format. So what do we mean by meme format? Um, Right. So if you think of a particular image that you've seen used for a meme, um, you know, where the captions or labels change or maybe the image itself is modified, um, but it's kind of shared in different iterations where the basic format or layout of the image and text stays the same. Um, sometimes this is called a meme template. Um, so, you know, these formats and templates often have kind of uh, shorthand ways they're referred to, like um, woman yelling at cat <laughs> or uh, galaxy brain, the like exploding brain. Uh, condescending Willy Wonka, um, 
what what I do versus what people think I do, that little matrix of images. Um, so that's what we mean by meme format. Um, so for this example, um, uh, we have an example here that is, this is the meme format, is this a pigeon? And um, this is image here is a public domain image from the New York Public Library, I believe, um, collections. We have the image citation again at the end of a uh, print with Pinocchio gesturing at two bats, um, which is very similar. So um, you can take that format of, is this a pigeon? Um, and mar marry it with the kind of public domain example, add some text um, and kind of create a version that is recognizable, but uses a public domain image rather than the original creative work. Um, another example we have here, and I'll let Crystal talk about this one because she made it. <laughs> um, so yes, the meme format or template is the distracted boyfriend, and you can put words on it of what he's looking at and what he should be looking at. Uh, and I found an image uh, with a CC BY license on it of meerkats, and I uh, added another meerkat and uh, and said that instead of doing my writing project, I was looking at meerkats on the internet. So um, yeah, it was, you know, pulling from a, a CC BY um, and I, I used Photoshop. Somebody asked about tools. Um, I use Photoshop. I just, I'm really comfortable in it, but there's lots of other um, different kinds of tools you can use web-based on your phone. Um, there's some, I think there's like a, an Adobe image phone app that's free, uh, Snapseed. I really like Snapseed. I know Instagram also has some sort of like frames and filters and ways to add text and things. Um, you know, all of the live stream media have these options kind of built in for frames and, and text uh, like TikTok or Instagram Reels or those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another question in here about how does it work with movie or TV show still frames. So there's a couple things to think about and Rachel can probably add more um, is the license of the TV show, obviously you have to pay attention to, but if it's one snippet, then you can maybe walk through the fair use argument and decide if you think that qualifies as fair use. And because it's such a small portion of the entire work, it usually can fall into that bucket. Right, right. And so, yeah, exactly with um, copyrighted materials. And of course, TV shows and movies count. They are copyrighted materials, unless they're really old. <laughs> um, but, um, and you, we very commonly do see still frames of, um, of media like that being shared um, under fair use. Um, but the kind of key there is how are you reusing it? So it, there's a difference between, um, you know, showing a 10 second video clip. There's not a magic number either for, a lot of times you'll see like 10% of the work. If you, if you share less than 10% of the work, that's legal. That's a misconception. There is no magic number about how much of a work, although substance and, um, you know, uh, amount does factor into fair use. And that is discussed in, uh, I think it's section 107 where that discusses fair use. Um, it also matters whether you're doing commentary or criticism or transforming um, that content that factors into fair use as well. So generally it is fairly safe to share just one still frame of a movie or image because you're not really infringing on, A, it's kind of like free advertisement for them. As long as you're like not infringing on the um, commercial interests, that honestly is the big one for you know companies that wanna protect their commercial interests. That said, some companies, um, cough Disney, cough, <laughs> are really strict even about images sometimes in the context in which you're sharing images, especially if you're going to make money at all and you're infringing on their market. Um, so it really depends on, yeah, whose material it is. And that's why we say it's, it's complex and it gets really hairy. And that's why we recommend just finding public domain and Creative Commons license images. You can be more certain about it. Um, so how much time? We do have some time. I don't know, um, Crystal, uh, if we wanted to recommend folks um, walk through this first part now um, we, we do have plenty of time to answer additional questions. Um, what would folks um, prefer? We do have, and then we have at the very um, end of our slide deck, if you make one of these memes, um, we would love for you to, if you wanna share it on social media, tag us. So we do just have information here. We are at UCR Library. Um, if you search UCR Library on YouTube, it'll pull us up, but I believe officially it's UCR Libraries, plural on YouTube. Um, 
And I'm going to go ahead, um, in case folks do need to hop away, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oops, you know what, I didn't put it in here. I have a link to a, an assessment form because we just always like to share an assessment if you want to like take two seconds to fill out a very brief um, survey. So I'll grab the link to that. Um, but yeah, do folks have other questions for us?